The insulin sliding scale is one of those things you'll hear people talk about on the wards and kind of assume that you know, but never actually explain it to you. Worst of all, it seems too simple a concept to, to bother asking and tending, so this is our attempt to fill you in. So to sum up the sliding scale in one sentence, it's basically the hospital's attempt to figure out how much insulin needs to be given to a patient for a given blood glucose level. So you will see this insulin sliding scale used mainly in medicine and surgery because at different points during a patient's hospital stay, they may be taken off one or more of their hypoglycemic medications and thus require extra monitoring to make sure their glucose is in check. On the medicine wards, you're going to see the sliding scale used in type 1 and type 2 diabetics. However, on the surgical floors, this population is actually expanded to most everyone as surgery and stress are said to have a negative impact on glycemic control and higher levels of glucose impairs wound healing and alters the immune response. So what does it mean when you order a sliding scale? Basically, a sliding scale means that a patient's glucose level will be monitored every four to six hours and varying doses of insulin will be given depending on the patient's glucose level. Generally, a very generous target glucose is less than 200. However, you'll see some patients that state that glucose levels should really be kept less than 150. So this is an example of what the sliding scale looks like. I know you all can read, so I'm not going to read this to you. But basically, what it's saying is increasing levels of blood glucose require increasing levels of insulin. It's pretty intuitive. However, there are a few things to keep in mind when using the sliding scale. First, there are many variations of the sliding scale based on insulin sensitivity. So what this means is there are, there are people who are very insulin sensitive, and there are those who are resistant, i.e. require more insulin for a given glucose level. So generally, those that fall into the sensitive category have type 1 diabetes, or have renal failure as insulin is 50% renally excreted. Those that are on the more resistant scale are type 2 diabetics, patients who use corticosteroids, or those who have sepsis or other severe illnesses. Now this is an example of the sensitive and the resistant scales. As you can see, if you compare the sensitive and the resistant scales to the standard scale, for the resistant scale, you're actually going to be giving more units of insulin per blood glucose level, whereas in the sensitive scale, you're going to be giving less units of insulin per blood glucose level. Now, to figure out which scale the patient might be on, you might hear what they, of what they call as the rule of 1800. So the rule of 1800 basically states that if a patient, for example, we take a patient who takes 60 units of insulin per day at home, we, are take, we are, will divide 1800 by 60 to determine how much one unit of insulin will drop this patient's blood glucose level. So 1800 100 over 60 is 30. So again, one unit of insulin will drop the patient's blood glucose by 30. Now, how this comes into play is let's take our standard scale. Let's say we have a patient in the hospital on 60 units who has a blood glucose of 200. Per our sliding scale, we need to give this patient two units of insulin. Now, two units of insulin will drop the level to 30 times 2, or 200 minus 60, or 140, which is within our target range of glucose. Okay, now let's change this up a bit. What happens if our patient was taking 100 of units per day? 
Now using this tool, we take 1800. Let's take this out. And divide this by 100, which will give us 18. So one unit of insulin will only drop our glucose by 18. Now if we used our previous standard protocol, if the patient had a blood glucose of 200 and we give them only two units of insulin, this time two units will drop it 18 times 2 or 36, which if you subtract that from 200 will give you 164, which is not really in the target range of 150 if that's what we're using. So therefore you might consider putting them on the more resistant scale. And finally, after putting a patient on a sliding scale, you should check daily to see how much insulin off the sliding scale protocol has required, has, has the patient required. So remember, this sliding scale is separate from the current home meds that they're on or any standing dose of insulin. And you should consider, in general, a more resistant scale if the patient requires 8 to 10 units in addition to their current insulin based on this sliding scale of insulin. So finally, take home points. Insulin sliding scale is how much insulin needs to be given to a patient for a given blood glucose level. There are very different insulin sliding scales, which range from sensitive to very resistant. And finally, you should check how much insulin the patient is using based on the sliding scale, i.e. in addition to the regular regimen, is given per day to make sure the patient is on the correct scale. Thank you.